Hello, Hello everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. So Sharon Robinson and Jessica, say hello hey. to both of us. Hey, Sharon. Hey, Jessica. How are you? How are you? Oh, goodness. So Ginger Davis Almond is doing a really fun thing on her Blue Bottle Tree site. She is doing the Pinch Pot Challenge. And I've been having some fun making some pinch pots. Here's a pinch pot I made. I textured it and I put some alcohol ink on it after it was baked. You know, I kind of like the ginger stuff because it's really not like a contest. It's like, where can you push your stuff? Hey, Teresa, yeah. welcome aboard. Hey, Teresa. Hey, Teresa. Is Teresa Salgado? I can't yes. see the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm her cue. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming by. So we're doing a pinch pot challenge tonight. It's from um, Ginger's website, the Blue Bottle Tree. That's a... You know, if you haven't been to that website and you play with clay at all, you have to go there. She just has all this really well-researched, um, accurate information on her website about polymer clay and techniques and um, proper baking and proper conditioning and, and, and everything, 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 everything. So I was a little bit nervous to do this tonight because, you know, usually I... Um, I get a project down pat, <laughs> and then, and then uh, when I've done it like five or six times, that's when I make a film about it or I do a live. But this is, has been so much, you know, fun and it's interesting um, that I decided to go ahead and do it. And so, what I have here is some questions from Ginger's challenge. So we're gonna try to answer these questions as we go along tonight. So the first question was how big can you go? And so this pinch pot and my hot little hands right here, this is about as big as I was able to go with the pinch pot. Um, and as you can see, it's still pretty thick. I'm still working with pretty thick uh, little pinch pots and stuff like that. Um, and there's some problems with that. You can get some cr uh, cracking cracking with that. So the second question is which clay is best to use? And mostly I've been working with scrap clay. So this is some Kato clay and I'm going to try to get it warmed up and I'm going to try to see how it goes. I haven't had as much luck with the Kato clay um, as Primo, not because the Kato clay is a bad clay, it's not a bad clay at all, but because my thumb hurt the time. So I'm trying to get this warmed up a little bit. Donnelly Little says hello, sweetie. Hi, Donnelly Little. So the way that you make a pinch pot, or the way that you start a pinch pot, is you know you get a ball of clay and you stick your thumb in there to try and get it started. So that this is all <clears throat> primo clay. And it's not extremely soft clay, but as you can see, that's that's a little bit even with primo. You can imagine that after you made a few of these, um your thumb would hurt. <laughs> plus plus your thumbnail turns green. If you had long long fingernails, that'd be hard to do. Um this is the Cato clay, and it is much, much harder to get a pinch pot started with the Cato clay. You really, really would have to work to get this clay warm. So I'm not saying that the Cato is a bad clay, um, but it is more difficult. I was able to get thinner walls with the Cato clay. Um, but it it was something like where I really had to sit there while I was watching television and little by little by little just try to get my thumb in there and try to get a bowl shape started. So 
the general recommendations when you're making a pinch pot is, you know, hold it in one hand. I'm holding it, believe it or not, in my dominant hand. And I've got my thumb on the inside. And they call it a pinch pot, but I feel more like I'm shaping. So Teresa had a getting. good idea. She says maybe use a big ball stylus to start it. Well, that's what I was going to get to that. There's another way to start. And, yeah, you can if you want. Let me make sure. You can if you want. Just st stick one of these in there. <laughs> and that's a way to save your thumbs. Because after a couple of them, you know, I've abused my hands my whole life with, you know, knitting, crocheting, wood burning, clay. Um, so that is another way to start the pinch pot. I'm going to put this back down for a little. Another way to start is to sort of do a combination pinch pot coil. So this is a circle of clay. Um, I rolled out clay at the thickest setting and I cut three circles and put them together. So the, this is three layers of the thickest setting. And then what I did was I took a snake of clay. So this has a couple of advantages. And the first advantage is that um, it's easier to get sides with equal thicknesses if you start with a snake that's pretty much um, an equal diameter all the way around. I'm going to trim the edge. Might have to trim it again. And so I started with the circle and I'm going to put a coil a coil of clay on top of the circle. Trim it again. Get it all stuck together. Let's get that on there evenly. Make sure it's all stuck together. And then you can start pinching up your sides from, from here. Now, I have been keeping my thumb on the inside and my fingers on the outside. Um, because that's how I was instructed to do it in high school. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, that's just how I've seen it done. But one of the questions Ginger was asking is, are, are, you, are you better off doing it the other way around? And I think I'd probably have to switch hands for that. And I just feel like having my fingers on the outside makes it easier to shape. Because we're using the word pinch. Um, but I, I wonder if... Um, it's really more of a, a pull, which is one of the questions Ginger asks. You know, is are you do you find it easier to pinch or do you find it easier to pull? And the final advantage to using this method is it does provide you with a nice flat base. Nice flat base there to put your stuff on. And so I'm going to just kind of spread the clay down or smear. I'm smearing the clay just so I make sure that this coil is really attached to this base. Because we don't want that base to fall off in the middle of everything. See, now I have that song, It's All About That Bass in My Head. That's not fair. <laughs> it's my theme song. It's all about that bass, about that bass. No trouble. <laughs> I'm bringing booty back. But somebody's got to, because I have no ass. <laughs> so how's Chad doing? Do we have any questions so far? No, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. We got, we're up to 12 people. Thank you, folks. So, 
As you can see, I'm getting that nice and attached. And I have been, I haven't made too, too many of these, but I have been getting things kind of as smooth as I can and as nice looking as I can prior to baking, prior to curing. You know, so you, it kind of cuts down on how much, I'll move all these ones out of the way, cuts down on how much you, um, you have to finish, you know, sand, and a lot of people don't like that. I think it's, you know, it's, it's something, uh, usually I sand while we're watching television. And it's uh, calming for me, but a lot of people find it, you know, just horrible. And so, I want to make sure you can see. Yeah, you're good sometimes, sweetie. sometimes, I guess I am pulling, pulling up. And when I pull up, I'm also trying to shape. And there's a lot of things going on because you're trying to keep the thickness, um, you know, pretty consistent. And so here, I'm kind of pulling in, I'm shaping in, right, to get, get that shape. But you can also pull out. So if you wanted like more of a dish or a bowl, that's what you do. So we have it on record. Jessica doesn't mind sanding. So we're sending her all the stuff you need. <laughs> I can't. I've tried to teach. I've tried to teach Meech to sand. But, um, I don't have the patience you know, for it. Speaking of uh, sanding and things like that, I saw that uh, Ken Epperly, so see, I'm just closing that seam there on the inside as well. I saw that Ken Epperly and uh, Bella, Bella Giovanni um, wrote a book on using the, um, the tumbler to finish their work instead of sanding now, because Ken's... Ken's like I was. Ken's a, uh, he's a production worker. You know, he, he does a lot of shows and stuff like that. And so, you know, to hand sand things gets, gets very, very time consuming. Um, but he kind of pops everything into the, the tumbler now and then he can walk away and do other things. You know, we tried that, but I, you know, we should get We did book. not, he, yeah, oh yeah, no, it's free. It's, I've seen it. It's on Teresa's. It's on um, Teresa's uh, Tiny Pandora website. Another great site. And another great live streamer, Teresa Salgado. Okay. So that's kind of the biggest problem I've had is getting the top even. I'm going to show you some tricks for that. I'm going to probably roll that seam. Okay. So that's a combination pinch pot, coil pot. And what you could do if you want to is you can add another coil. So that's another kind of advantage of this uh, coil technique. Yeah, I got a near bubble. I got a near bubble. Let me try to roll that out. Now, you can add a coil that goes all the way around. Or you can add it to just, just part of it. Let's do just this. Do even smaller than that. And then you can really start affecting the shape of it. Make it more like a basket shape on one side. I saw a woman with earth and clay use a technique like this. She brought it up higher, and then she added on one side like this, um, and then she added a handle on the other side. And so she had like a little 
milk jug, I guess. <laughs> Your little poor pot, huh? Yeah, yeah, little poor pot. Um, now, here's another kind of cool thing that you can do. I'm going to take off that piece that I added and put it on there very, very well. I'm going to bring these sides up just a little bit more. And if you want to keep it round, you know, you kind of keep it in the palm of your hand, hand like this. And that keeps it pretty, pretty round. But I'm going to bring, you know, I went pretty wide with this. But I'm going to go ahead. So, so Teresa's saying earworm? And, uh, Earworm, the song? Yeah. It's all about that bass, about that bass. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm doing here is I've decided to um, close it up a little bit. I want to close it up more like this one. And the way that I've been doing that is I'm, it's almost like I'm reducing a cane. You know, that would make a great little bag. <laughs> you slip and drop right here, because that's your bag. <laughs> <laughs> and then what I do is I find some sort of dowel or knitting needle or something. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it in and wrap it around that. Because it's really, really tough. It's really tough to get a nice, smooth um, top on these. No matter what you do. I mean, I've tried doing this. <laughs> I've tried doing a lot of things. And this is what I wound up doing. And I'll show you this again on a larger one. So, like I said, this is almost like uh, reducing a cane. I'm bringing that in. And then get my hands in there to kind of keep it. I don't want it to get too thick. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll, if I can't get my thumb in there anymore, I'll, I'll use a ball tool. It's going in here. And this is super soft clay that I'm working with right now. It's those warm hands. Those warm hands of mine. But I don't have a cold heart. Not at all. I don't. You're good okay, at so the I... care and feeding of a mesh. <laughs> so I've got it. Snugged around this knitting needle. I was about to ask what that was. It's a knitting needle. You can use anything. And now I'm going to trim the top pretty straight. Better than it is, at least. So that top's pretty straight. And believe it or not, this is a very thick walled one. But believe it or not, you can pop that in the oven and it doesn't collapse. You know, this one's actually much better looking than this one. This is one that's already, it's already baked. And, um, you know, I, I, I baked it an hour and it didn't collapse. It, it didn't distort. So it just does the normal clay shrinkage? It, it doesn't yeah, well. It, no, um, and so the the theory <laughs> is I'm going to show you, I'm going to make another one while we're talking. So the theory is that the the hot air is, is well, one there, the ones I've been making at least are pretty thick. I mean, that's a, that, these are pretty thick edges and, um, you know, so that helps, but also, um, 
you know, there's the thinking is that the actual air uh, keeps them keeps the shape. Now, I took a class one time. I don't want to say too much about it, <clears throat> but I took a class with Dan Cormier one time, and he makes hollow beads, but he very purposely puts a little hole in them. And he says the reason for that is he thinks the collapsing happens um, not as the air, you know, heats up and expands, but as it cools. That makes sense. So this way it'll backfill air. It also, it works in both directions, right? You put a hole in it. As the air expands, it's got a place to go. And as it contracts, it can suck in more air. So here I'm bringing out the sides a little bit. I want to get this, I want to get this, uh, pudgy. <laughs> I want to make it a little bit pudgy. They're fluffy bowls. So and another thing that I've noticed is people talk a lot about keeping the sides consistent. But, you know, we're, we're trying to shape this as well as draw it up. So down here right now is thinner than up here, right? Because I, I have to leave myself some to work with. Or, or it gets way too thin. Way too thin. Now, this pinch pot, I didn't start with a flat circle. You can kind of stick it down on the tile to flatten it. Um, but I also like to take a ball tool and put it in the middle there. That's after I get the pot started. I put that little little ball tool in the middle. And if you have fingernails, they're going to get dirty. <laughs> there's, no, there's no way out of it. All right. So we'll see how, how tall we can get this one. Now I'm going to start bringing it back in with my fingers. So I have been going, you know, away from the center. And now I'm using my fingers and my thumb to draw it toward the center. And if anybody has any questions, jump in. And I suppose you could you could leave it like that. You know, there's nothing wrong with having, but I've I've really been enjoying putting these necks on. So that's what I'm gonna do. So are these bud vases or I'm <laughs> Sorry, this is you know the engineer. I'm, I'm, uh, they're cool shapes. It's like you've got one that that looks like a gourd that's out front. Uh, or is no, it that looks like that looks like the alien, right? That, that's like the <laughs> alien's egg. So Jessica's just watching. She's never heard of pinch pots before. Hey, sweetie, we're at about the thirty minute mark, and I'm going to make you do a station break announcement. <laughs> okay okay so you know last week we um we released um silk screen stencils and stamps and that's a tutorial where i taught everybody how to cover a can with uh, a pretty romantic veneer and i showed how you could you know get an evenly spaced repeating design i showed a simplified way for um, silk screening and um, I showed using stamps and stencils on the clay and then this week uh, we added some bonuses Mish added um, some cut files and um, a template for a stencil for um, these sort of hexagon honeycomb shapes and I added a little bonus chapter. Um, the stencil, the silk screens that I used for the project are all from uh, Mary Joy Col Coleman, O Joy Creations. And she had also sent me um, some nice uh, starfish. So I, I made, made a little video, bonus video for you all, shiny starfish. 
and um, it features uh, an easy clay bale and um, this glossy liquid clay finish. For that one, I use Kato liquid clay. So, uh, if you use coupon code May twenty, that is on sale. All of that is on sale for only ten bucks till the end of May. With that coupon code, you have to use that coupon code. Okay, so I'm pulling it in, and I just found an ear bubble. So that's one of the. I, this keeps happening to me every time I stream. I get an itchy nose. So. Um, one of the questions is, did you get air bubbles, and what's the best way to fix them? So, for me, sometimes I can just pop the air bubble, and it doesn't make that much of a difference. But if it's a big air bubble in the wall of the vessel, sometimes um, it makes that one spot way too thin. And so I start over, which I know sounds... So Donna Lee Little had a com uh, had a question during the commercial. I apologize. <laughs> her, 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 her question is, why do you put the ball stylus in the bottom of the pot? The bottom here? Um, one, I like the way that looks. <laughs> but it keeps it flat. It keeps it flat. So I have a nice flat pot. To, so see this one, I didn't do the ball stylus. And um, it's, it's kind of hard to... You know, sometimes they're wobbly. Um, but mostly, I just kind of like the way that looked. I, I just sort of, I thought it looked kind of cool. So once again, um, you know, at this point, if I want a long neck on it or I want a small opening, this is what I start doing. I start working more like, like I'm uh, reducing a cane. Now, sometimes... You want an opening, um, you know, you want some, you want a neck or you, or you want a nice, as flat as you can get it opening, but you don't necessarily want a small opening like that. So in those cases, what I do is I just put a cutter in there. This is just a circle cutter that I'm putting in there. Thanks for purchasing it, Jessica. No, I mean, we like to do these little bonus things. You know, it's it's a nice little surprise. You know, adds to the value. <laughs> Keeps us both busy, believe me. <laughs> Yesterday was quite the little production house in here. I'm cranking away on the PDF. Poor Cynthia's cranking away on the video. The dog's looking at us both going, uh, food, guys. I need food. I need food and water and to take a walk. Okay, so I've got you know, my little cutter in there, my little round cutter. And then, and of course, this is if you want, if you want it straight. I saw a lot of people do uh, kind of a ruffled edge. And that's interesting, too. Oh, I messed that up. Yeah, let me do it with this. Let me do it with this. So now, just, I'm still looking for purposes, okay? Would this hold alcohol? <laughs> Paula McClay is not considered food safe. And it's not that there's something dreadfully poisonous about Paula McClay. It's really that it hasn't been tested. It would cost Polyform a lot of money to go through and test to see if it was... Um, if, if, if it was food safe. Because it would make a very nice ergonomic shot glass. <laughs> well, you know, we, you know we most could... of the time, most of the time people work around glass or something like that. So then what they do, like this is really the purpose of these, um, that, you know, I was really surprised. This is just scrap clay. And I made a couple with just scrap clay. Um, but, you know, if you sand them and polish them up, they are pretty little bud vases. They really, really are. But the reason why um, Ginger started the challenge um, was more to, 
trying to think of how to explain this, you know, we're always trying to make polymer clay look like something else or act like something else. You know, we take um, <clears throat> metalworking techniques like Mukumigani or we take um, glassmakers, um, Millefiori techniques, um, and we try to make it look like glass. So we try to, um, you know, we try to make it look like wood. We, we do all kinds of stuff with it. Um, but, you know, Ginger really wanted to explore just just polymer clay just the material and what can you do with it and how is it similar to earth and clay and how is it different from uh, earth and clay deborah What's farmer just arrived and says hello hello deborah farmer so uh, this is another vessel so i'm, gonna, I'm taking a look at these um questions that ginger put up there uh, i wish i'd known you'd had them oh, i would so have displayed them for you so another one of the questions is, is it easy or hard to close the mouth? And like I said, I think to a degree, it's kind of hard to close the mouth. And so that's why I use the methods that you saw. I didn't really pinch this close. You know, um, this was definitely just drawn up um, and then around the cutter. And, <clears throat> you know, to be honest with you, I, I didn't do it yet, but even... Even using that method I just showed you, um, I've, I've had to do a certain amount of sanding, you know, on the on the rim, or else it just doesn't look that good. Just doesn't look that good. All right, now, how do you make a flat base? Well, I showed a couple of ways that I make a flat base. That was one of the questions. <laughs> Can you cut into it? So I haven't exactly cut into them. I haven't exactly cut into them. But this is a fluting tool. Um, and it's made by, I believe it's pronounced Zeem. X-I-E-M. This is not a cheap tool. This is not a cheap tool. Because I've been interested in carving polymer clay for a long time. But I usually try to carve on um, cured clay but I've mentioned a few times that these are thick and so one of the problems with thick clay is um, it can crack especially where you've changed the shape and so for this big guy <laughs> what I did is I used the tool to take some bulk out of the clay. So I'm not pressing very hard. It's a pretty gentle, gentle motion. And just kind of all over the place. That's kind of the one I like. You've got, the, you've got that kind of the little lines carved in it. Yeah. And, and I felt like this helped. Maybe it was my imagination because it's still really thick in places. So what's the advantage of carving wet or carving dry? I guess that's the best way I could put it. Well, the reason why I started carving into them when, when they were still raw um, was, again, to take some of the bulk out and reduce the... Um, likelihood that they would crack because if if you remember correctly I had a few of them really crack and then when I started to do this this carving into them um, it seemed to reduce that it seemed to reduce that a lot actually now I could be I could be just imagining that. I might have just got lucky with the carved ones. <laughs> have you ever had it? And I don't. I know you haven't done this that much, but does it affect the dry at all? The dry when you bake, when you bake it, I could see it 
having different stress points on the, in the clay? Um, like I said, it it seemed to actually. I think Ginger has arrived because this blue bo bottle tree icon just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I'm not very scientific with this stuff, <laughs> but I have these really thick, right? I, I haven't been, I haven't gotten to the point where I can do thin walls yet. Um, now, having said that, I've also been trying not to fill them with sand or salt or corn. I've been trying to cure them just as they are. Um, now, this one had some cracks in it, but you know, sometimes those cracks close up when, when you um, let them cool. Um, but I, I got this idea in my head that, okay, I have this pretty thick ve vessel, and if I take this carving tool, this fluting tool, this us call a fluting tool, and I take some of the bulk of this out, will, will that reduce the cracking? And it's, it, it seemed to. <laughs> but, Thanks, you know, I don't have... I don't have a lab here. I don't know. <laughs> well, I have a lab. Why don't you have a lab? So, so the blue bottle tree says, have you ever tried cutting a hole in the side? So you, well, can, so you can add another piece. And then she answered my question with, yes, in fact, the weak areas can collapse during baking. You see, I think that's really... Well, anyways, this is this is a lino tool, and I also did some carving into them with the lino tool. Now, I'm not ready to show you guys um, carving afterwards, but that was uh, the idea that I had, and so I did. I did start, um, you know, carving into them a lot, but now I'm hearing that it's not a great. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Did you? I mean, the one that we have center stage. Did you carve into that one while it was still wet? I did. I carved into it when it was still wet, and um, then after it was cured, I covered it just with uh, scrap veneer, and I, you know, pushed it into the lines that I had carved in there, and then I textured it. I textured so, it. So it's probably a thickness thing, right? If you go too thin on your carving, definitely I could see it deforming because the heat's going to, you know, extend those weak areas. If you've got a good thickness, you're probably luckier. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I don't have the tool out. Um, you can carve afterwards. These are all very, very cool right now um they've been you know i i cured them yesterday um and so it can be really hard to carve on um cured clay when it's cool you know I, i'd rather do it when it's still warm and this tool doesn't doesn't necessarily do the job um even this tool is a um like a lino cutting tool, you know, when people, you know, carve linoleum blocks and uh, use them for printmaking. That's what this tool is. And I, it's not safe for me right now to show you how to do it. I don't have a good setup uh, right here. Um, but if you get a good set of these, they, they do a pretty good job on uh, polymer clay. I would hesitate to try it right now because I've used these tools on polymer clay, but I haven't used them on a, a like a 3D object. I've only used them on on flat objects. Um, but that is something that you can that you can look into. I I just have visions of me. <laughs> No blood today. I, I have, there's a setup I usually use where, you know, there's a block with a back, backstop on it, and there's, you know, safety measures set up so that you can do that. But it does go through um, uncured polymer clay, you know, pretty well, pretty well. So that is a little bit of carving on there. So you could, you know, clean that up a little bit. You could take a wipeout tool and clean that up a little bit. Now, 
We are going through your list of questions, Ginger. <laughs> So, in our usual haphazard random way. No, it, it, it actually hasn't been rap, you know, haphazard in, in random. Um, one of the ways that I was showing people that I make a flat base ginger is I oftentimes will start with a, a very thick circle that I've cut. Um, generally, I run the clay out on the thickest setting and stack three layers and then cut a circle. Um, and then instead of uh, starting, you know, with a ball of clay, I then put a coil around that circle. And that's a great way to get a flat base. Um, and it's also a little bit easier on your thumb. Um, and then I showed with this one, I very often just use a, a big ball tool to get it started. Like one of these. But another way that I... I oftentimes will get a, f a nice flat um, bottom is uh, once I get it started, this isn't centered very well, but once I get it started, um, I'll stick a ball tool in there because I just like the way that looks. And then when I press it down, you know, that gives me a nice flat area. But again, that's, that's not very centered. Okay, so can we cut holes into it? So I suppose that I could take some very small cutters, you know, like those boot lace ferrules that people use a lot. But I think I could also maybe try like this. I'm going to start with just a, a needle tool. Just a little needle tool. And then, excuse me just a minute. I could maybe enlarge that with the larger with a small knitting needle. Then a larger knitting needle. Then a larger knitting needle. And then the largest knitting needle. You don't have any of those those little old lady spears? Little old lady spears. Yeah, they're like as big around as my ring finger. And and what do these little old ladies use these spears for? <laughs> they're in the He's, knitting saying, section. Oh, 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 okay. I guess it's a knitting needle. So that's one way to get a hole in it. And you could probably do a really cool pattern. I, let's see what happens if we just go straight through with just the thickest knitting needle. And I am twisting here. Yeah, I guess that comes out almost as good. So now part of that question was, can you attach something to that? So I'm wondering, um, so let me see what the question is exactly. What's the best way? What happens if you don't fix them? How do you make a book? Can you add a foot or what happens if... So, I mean, all right, that's a hole. But what I think would probably be harder to do because... Let me get some clay of another color. I think that what she was probably talking about was something more. I'm going to put this in just to keep it stable. And that's just a circle cutter. And let's see, can we cut out sections? I 
Maybe that's what she's talking about. See, I have done most most of my decorating um, after they were cured. I haven't been this brave. What's life? Uh, I think. Very brave. Yeah. Well, I think if I try to do, I think I if I try to do what I'm doing right here, um, without it being on this cutter to stabilize it. I yeah, think it would. Uh, it. it wouldn't work that well. I, I, I would agree with you. Um, I don't really like that square shape I put in there. So I think if if you wanted to, so now the cutting into it, uh, this isn't going too badly. No. <laughs> no, Cynthia. <laughs> It's Let okay. We more. have we have a box of wine. <laughs> so there, I was able to cut into it, and then I think what I would probably do is make a coil, so I could put. I, I'm not. I'm oh, not so, sure if I understand. So, well, here, let me read it. Uh, because I've got it up here. Hello, Suzanne Lutel. Hi, Suzanne. Uh, she's asking if the uh, if a hole would help with bubbles. Um. Again, I, I, I so there are times where as I'm so this isn't a veneer that I that I've put over some uh, clay that was already cured. Um, as I find bubbles in the, you know, in the walls, if I do find bubbles, I try really hard to condition it to the point where I don't have a bubble problem, <laughs> but it happens. Um, when I see a bubble, what I do is I, I break the bubble, right? And sometimes it's like, oh, it's just a little bubble. It, it's not that, it's not that big of a deal. I just slice the bubble open. But if you haven't condition the clay right or um, if you've um, like when I was practicing these I would make a pot collapse it make a pot collapse it um, and if you didn't you know sort of condition it well in between then oftentimes what would happen is I'd get a bubble that was so big that it would uh, it would really affect the thickness of the wall in that area though you know you break the bubble there's and there's no clay inside of it and it's a it's a big bubble um, so it when I found bubbles that large what I did is I um I started over <laughs> this is so hard for me I'm sorry guys I'm really used to knowing what I'm talking about <laughs> this is Cynthia out of her comfort zone really out of her comfort zone so, the blue bottle tree said it was a rhetorical question. How do they put spouts on, on teapots? So that was kind of what she was looking at. Was oh, okay. Well, before you came on, I I did that with with this clay. Um, I, I talked about it. that. And yeah. Jessica wants to know if she can have some of your wine. <laughs> you notice yeah. I'm not uh, offering my gin. She's going to have some of your wine. That's I got plenty of wine. I got plenty of one. Um, so, well, this is kind of cool. Okay, you can add to it. The way that I've been adding, um, if I if I want like if I want a shape like this, um, I don't think you were here. But what I did, I'll show it on another one. What I did is I I kind of uh, to bring the top in. I bring it in as much as I can with my. Um, you know, with my fingers and thumb, and then I sort of reduce it the way you reduce a cane, um, and then I, I stick either, you know, a cutter or a knitting needle or something in there so that I can trim it much nicer than I was getting. Well, this is kind of cool, this little, this little guy here. Yeah, I kind of like that. That would really make the alien. I mean, you put the holes around it. We could do an alien thing. You're catching my science <laughs> fiction thing here. 
you know, this is the mouth that's open that's infected some poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm going to leave this clay over here. All right, so now there's something I learned that, but I wonder what would happen. Jessica likes just... that one, sweetie. It's got, kind of, yeah. I think it's got some interest. I've, I wonder what would happen if I would have just poked some more. So this would not be a good vase. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, would, it, would, it would leave. Oh, <laughs> but I think... I think that to add on to the top with a coil like this is a cool idea. Um, you could backfill these. That's another challenge that Jim just, Jim just leading me down a path. Um, you could backfill these. What you would do is you would cure it and then come back in. So Tandy's original says, I love organic. And that is, that is you know, you're right right there. That, that's very organic. It is organic. Now, Ginger's is. confusing me yet again. Ginger as herself now says, those holes make me think of an ocarina. Exactly. She's got a piece. That's what it brings to my mind is like an ocarina. You're exactly right. I don't know what an and ocarina I, is. I, did you ever watch Zelda? An ocarina is like a, um, almost, it's, it's a form of pan flute. Yeah, like, but... Okay. But see, oh. and again, this is really hard for me to do because I, I, you know, what I like to do is to design a project and do it 500,000 times <laughs> and then no. present it on stream or, or make a, um, you know, uh, make a tutorial on it. Um, but this is actually this is really good. What for I school. liked. Yeah. And, and. It was, I, I, the only word I can think of is making these, even though my thumb hurt by the end of the night, <laughs> making these was really therapeutic for me. It, it, I, I was very, very much just, I wasn't thinking, oh, can I teach this to people? Or, oh, is this something people would want to learn to? This was really, really, really just exploring the clay. And I, I really, really had a lot of fun with it. I am looking for my favorite smoothing tool. And it seems to have run away because I'm here live in front of everybody. Uh, Ginger now, also added she really likes that one as well. This one here? Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is cool. Now... And this is the uh, another thing, an, another challenge, right? Because you make this, and you know it's hollow, and so some of the some of the things that you've come to rely on um, to get things smooth or to um, you know make things look as good as they can before you put it in the oven. Because I, you know, I tell my students all the time, there's nothing magic that happens in the oven. If you don't like the way it looks. If you don't like the way it looks before you put it in the oven, you're not going to like the way it looks when uh, when it comes out. You're not going to like it. So, but that, you know, like I'm not quite sure I like this seam, but I'm not quite sure how I can fix that seam. I'll try this. Okay, so we've, well, I like that better. So that's probably how I would do that to get that out of there. Okay. Are you guys up for another one? Want to try another one? See what we can do with it? I do. All right. I do. You guys want me to start from the beginning? I think folks would. All 
I'm actually I'm collapsing this one because I want to see if I can get that problem with an ear bubble to show up. We'll find out. Okay, so I'm holding it, and this is just a, how I've become comfortable with it. You know, I've got a ball of clay. I do suggest that you know you you get the clay conditioned and you uh, you know pop bubbles as you're conditioning it and. Um, like I said, I started with Kato clay, um, but I, I, I'm i not using the Kato clay on stream because even with my hot hands, I can't get it warm enough. I can't get it to kind of flow. Um, the Kato can be much harder on your hands and thumbs. So again, you can just stick your thumb in the middle or you can use a ball tool. in the middle or you can use the method I showed you before where you can um, start with a coil and pinch it up and so I'm not just pinching I'm shaping and I, I do prefer to have my thumb on the inside and my fingers on the outside um, I just uh, I just felt it was very awkward. And I'm not using my dominant hand. I'm using my non-dominant hand. So Ginger's got to run, sweetie. She's had a good time. Okay. She, you know, Thank you she for said, coming by. Mm -hmm. Thank you she for says, coming by. Fun pitching. <laughs> Thank you for coming by. I, I enjoyed having you here. I, and I enjoyed the challenges and the questions. I did. Okay, so now again... That you hear people talk a lot about, you know, you want consistency in the thickness of the walls, but you have to leave enough clay at the top to, um, you know, give your give your room to grow it, give your room to make something. Um, and so it's really thinner down here at the bottom right now than it is at the top. Joanne Bright says she sees the cutest baby artichoke, artichoke just just drinking coffee. <laughs> And welcome in, Joanne Bright. All right. Well, now I found all that stuff from Ginger to be pretty, pretty, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Inspiring. All right. See that? I'm in the zone. Now, again, I like to use the ball tool. It is, um, hard to keep them uh, symmetrical too. It's really a challenge. It's really a challenge to make these. And I, that's just a little feature that I like to put in the bottom. Okay, now I'll pull this out just a little bit more. And I'm going to put a cutter in here. And the reason why I have the cutter in there is I want to keep it stable. While I do things to it. Thanks, Deborah. Deborah says two cups of coffee. Two cups of coffee. What I'm going to do is um, this is called a core roller. And I haven't tried this yet, but I'm excited to try it. So the core rollers, again, they're um, usually tools used with um, earthen clay. Um, but you can use them with polymer clay. And what I'm going to do is uh, this is a knee-high stocking. And the knee-high stocking has been filled with um, cornstarch, corn flour, if you're from the UK or Europe. That threw and me I'm when just, I first when I, when we were watching European cooking shows. I was like, "Sweetie, they don't mean cornmeal. So what is corn flour?" <laughs> and because I have this stabilized, it's kind of easy for me to roll this tool. And I'm being pretty random with it. Um, I very purposely used a, a random pattern. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
And I think what I would do with most of uh, what I showed you tonight is I would probably uh, paint it. My uh, latest favorite after curing, I would paint them, most of them. My latest favorite um, paint to use on polymer clay is water mixable oils. So you get all the benefits of oil paint, but um, water soap and water cleanup. So it's kind of cool. Okay, so I have done some decoration that way. And once again, I'm going to, let's see, what do I have? What do we have that we could, we could use on this? I'm going to make my edge funky. I'm going to put a couple more of those in there. I'm being random. Random. Be random over here. So now I so I'm, I'm going to ask you guys because this is not the kind of thing I usually do. I usually have, you know, a step-by-step -step project ready for you. Did you like this? Did you like just watching me kind of experiment with pinch pots? <laughs> or are you like, uh, did you go back to your old way? <laughs> I've been in, well, what I've liked about this, sweetie, is that it's an exploration. It's, it's you know, I, I wish there was a, an easier way for folks in chat to engage to ask more like I have because it's been interesting to watch. It's something... Well, I'm a bit of a nebbish, but it's something I would never think of doing. I Well, um, and by the way, this is staying up because I consider this Ginger's gift to me, so I'm passing it on to you guys. Um, I didn't think of it, right? I, 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 I have seen people other than, than Ginger do um, pinch pots, but... Um, well, it's you know, not I, necessarily I the pinch pot, one, but... It. It's, it's working through a piece of art, forgive me, the best way to describe it, with research in mind. Mm. What are you doing? How is it affecting it? What if you do X, Y, and Z, right? Right. And, and Jessica and Suzanne both liked, liked this, so. Okay, well, are you over yet? <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you're pretty good on your feet. All right. I'm actually going to put this back in here again. Because I want to see if that carving I did before is easier if I stabilize it a little bit. So we've got some texture in here. And then I'm going to go back to my fluting tool. And I'm going to do some. So Deborah Farmer liked it. And her thumb's finally back and healed up. So she's going to be trying one again soon. All right, so the very first suggestion I'm going to make here is um, do all your carving and cutting before you do the zine tool because I'm, I'm obliterating half of what I did with the zine tool, the fluting tool. I always wondered what a flute was. So usually they do it like up here at the edge. They just pull down. And so, um, you know, again, uh, Ginger feels that this carving might <clears throat> might make it more subject to collapse. <laughs> how long? How long did these take to bake? I I I did them for an hour. These are thick. Ah. Oh, these well, are really. If we, if we weren't so far into the stream, I would say I'd take one and bake it as the experiment. Well, I've already, you know, I've already done it. I've, I, I have baked them carved. I mean, I, it must just be that I've done them so thick 
that it didn't right. matter. And, you know, one more time. We're going to put it back on one more time because I did obliterate most of that zeme tool. Ah, oh, I see what you mean. Not the zeme tool, the uh, carving tool. The core. Core roller. That's what it's called. You can tell I'm on the right side of my brain. The thing. <laughs> so so uh, Jessica says, if, if you all heard the running commentary I say to myself or my sister were watching your, your lives, you would think I'm nuttier than the trail mix. Nah, we take a little getting used to, and and I, I can see a lot of people having conversations on, what is that old guy saying again? <laughs> so again, I'm now going to make, um, I'm going to add to the top of this, I hope. We'll find out. And what I'll do is, you know, when I do get these um, all baked up and, and I do my last bit of, you know, when I decide if I'm going to paint them or just leave them as is, or um, I will show them on my page so you guys can see them. Now, I think, I think the holes add a lot, though. Right? They do. So I didn't... The negative space is cool. Yeah, negative space is cool. I think if we can use the zine roller on this one. So while you're putting the funny pattern The core. On, <laughs> the core. So the Jessica, core if, you th if you think you're running commentary, you should hear the Ginger the Dog commentary between the two of us <laughs> during dinner and late night TV watching. Yeah, not Ginger who was just here. Not... <laughs> No, 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 I said Ginger the dog. <laughs> Ginger or St. Bernard. That's kind of cool. I might add some more holes to that, too. But I, I do think the holes add something to it. If I have another shape handy. I don't know if I have another shape handy to, to try. I don't want to do just a heart. Let's see. What do I have here in the ham container? <laughs> <laughs> I've got some stars. Oh, that could be cool. It could be. Or it could be a disaster. <laughs> we don't know. So one thing that now I have to fix is now I don't like the way the inside of that looks. I, I like the way the outside of that looks. But I would have to do something to cover all this up. I would have to. I, w I wouldn't. All right, now I'm going to try some stars. What do you guys think? Some stars in here? Ah, oh, I don't like it. <laughs> well, smush some clay back in it. I don't like it. Um, no, I'm not going to smush clay back in it. What I'm going to do is uh, cut a hole. That doesn't mean we can't use... Well, you know, I guess that doesn't look too, too bad. Because what's funny is that kind of looks like almost a clam shape. And so you kind of got that whole starfish, beachy thing. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Jessica's saying, oh, do the star. And she kind of figured I was talking about Ginger the dog. And it's laughing. <laughs> it's the funniest thing because... You know, we're just kicking around watching TV late at night. and So, you know, she'll be sitting there and she gets in these moods. It's like I felt so bad. I actually got sushi for the first time in a long time. And normally I will give her, you know, some, some of this because she just loves fish. And I didn't give her any sushi. So I was in the doghouse last night. And, and I do Ginger's voice. <laughs> <laughs> But when we're having these conversations, sure, she'll sit there thoughtful and listen, and then look at the other one waiting for them to respond, and her head just goes back and forth as we have this, you know, dialogue between the two of, two of us and her voice. 
Well, there you go. All right. What time we got? Or we how much? Are, how much time? Uh, we are sitting at an hour seventeen. You've got thirteen minutes. If if for once you want to exit on time. Oh, uh, I wanted to show. Um, you know, there's a lot you can do with these after after they're baked up, and so. I've been having a lot of fun. These are made of scrap clay. Um, they're basically made of uh, what we always call mud, right? There's nothing very pretty, uh, you know, about the clay itself right here. Um, this clay is a little bit pretty, but um, oftentimes what I will do is I will cover them up. Oh, move everything. I got a lot of stuff here. I got all this stuff. Um, I have some liquid clay on this sponge and I'm gonna go ahead and cover up most of this little bottle and this is some stripy scrap that you can you can look that up there's recipes and directions for that everywhere and uh, what I thought I'd try tonight for, for this one I just kind of wrapped the scrap around and cut off the excess um, but I did get a few air bubbles so I, I was going to try to do something different with this one where I'm putting kind of smaller pieces on So this is kind of kind of applying of the veneer to it. Yeah. See, I'm learning this, all these technical words. You're a, you're an amazing guy. <laughs> you really are. I'm not even being a Weisenheimer. No, I, let's do that. My job is to be a Weisenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we'll be off stream eventually. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I was good tonight. You're always good. You're a good guy. Plus, we've got. Uh oh. Oh yeah. Did it didn't was Anita able to make it? She was gonna try. If she, she, I haven't seen her in oh, there she is. Speak of the devil. So Anita, she, we we got the fudge. <laughs> 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 but you know, this is Georgia. And so the we have to put the fudge in the fridge for a while before we can before we can eat it. I am glad you're enjoying this, Anita. This this is what it's like to hang out with the two of us online. We're kind of, <laughs> you know, take a little mix of Hogan's Heroes and a big mix of, you know. <laughs> what was her name? Who's who's the lady who I can't stand her stuff in Michaels? I I do not want to say that on air. What if there's a representative? <laughs> The uh, yes, yeah, so the so the fridge the the fudge is chilling in the fridge. Yeah, I can't wait to try it. But it really was. I was like, oh, oh, because <laughs> Mitch was taking the dog out <laughs> and he the fudge, and I just kind of shut the door, and I could just see on his face that he was like, she better not eat that fudge. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just I'm this sort of a pattern here. Yeah, there is. I'm putting I'm putting these circles on that, and I know people are looking at it going, "That doesn't look very good." But have faith, have faith. I have plans, and there's even like a few little gaps here and there. I really do have sore um, thumbs from this. I'm gonna cover the whole the whole darn thing. She says she's got fond memories of hanging out with the two of us at Indie Jam. 
That was fun. We always have fun. Yeah. A little too much fun at Indie Jam this year, but yeah, it was. <laughs> I still want that film. Um, <laughs> sweetie, we're coming up. You've got time. Do you have time for one more station break? Okay, so we did want to mention um, we did release silk screens, stencils, and stamps uh, where I showed people how to cover the a container. This happens to be canned chicken <laughs> container. Um, I used the beautiful silk screens from Old Joy Creation. That's the B. And I did show how to get a nice, evenly um, spaced repeating pattern. Holy cow, tongue twisters. Um, we also did some stenciling on the clay um, and some stamping on the clay. It shows how to make the container and the lid. Today, um, Mish added uh, the files so that you could uh, make your own honeycomb stencil that we used here. And then I added um, a shiny starfish. And again, this is one of um, Mary Joy's um, Oh Joy Creation silk screens. Um, this is a, a very glossy liquid finish. And um, there's also um, a polymer bale, an easy polymer bale that you can make with that. And if you use coupon code uh, May 20, lowercase May 20, um, it is $10 for all of that um, until the end of May. So bear with me while I continue to. And I'm just overlapping the circles. And the only reason why I'm doing this is because it was just a little bit easier. Rather than trying to wrap a full veneer around here and not have um, a lot of uh, air bubbles, it's sometimes easier to just do something like this. Hopefully I'll have enough. And I just thought this, um, I like this. This is um, copper Primo, um, Primo Pearl. And I uh, have a little bit of a white pearl mixed in with it. And, you know, I, I, I wish I could give you exact measurements, uh, but... It was actually, um, you know, like leftover scrap clay. I think you're going to hit it right at the wire, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm always so worried. I'm always like, I'm not going to have enough to talk uh, yeah. about what do. Every stream, the conversation, you know, we usually sit down and talk right before, like an hour or two before the stream. I'm worried. I'm worried I'm not going to have enough. <laughs> I don't have enough material. And if she could see me, because we're in two separate rooms, if she could see me, I'm sitting here spinning my hands going, come on, come on, we're getting near the end. We're getting near the end. <laughs> so I cover that hole. Holding up kind of random. And now I'm going to texture the bejesus out of it. <laughs> I've always wanted an exact definition for bejesus. Because part well, of he's got this image of Christ with bejewels. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> There's a special place for me to ask the frogs. <laughs> oh, we'll have to tell that story next week. Yeah. Um, we may have part two to that story this weekend. <laughs> and this is, a, this is a, a little kick that I'm on these days where I'm texturing pearl, pearl clay, pearlized clay, mica clay, I guess is the word I'm looking for.
and I'm actually pushing hard enough um, that I'm really disguising the seams between the, the circles. And what will happen is when I get to the bottom, I'll probably even have some to trim off. Can you guys see that's? I, I just think that's kind of a cool look. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. I used to never texture. I, I was really into um, sanding everything until it was shiny and I got to admit, some of those pieces are beautiful, though. Yeah. And this, you know, might have been really pretty. But this is a, just a way to, you know, and, and um, <coughs> it's interesting how, it's interesting how uh, the mica can affect your color combinations. Because if I were to do this with non-mica clay, you know, I think that brown would look really flat. It's not really brown. But. You know, that would might look really cool just is if you did a glossy finish on the blue green mm -hmm. and then a texture on the brown. That that contrast would be really cool. So see, I stopped at the very edge, but it's kind of pushed it right over on me. There was a lot, a lot more clay than I realized on there. So what you guys think? That was an idea that I had that I tried out live. I didn't test it 17 <laughs> times. I tried it out live. One of the things we're trying to figure out what to do with is... When we do a stream, she's not lying. We wind up with somewhere between 6 and 25 <laughs> versions of whatever the project the week is, right? So I've been sitting here going back and forth. Do we have a raffle and, 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 and you know, buy some raffle tickets and you can get one? I, I, if anybody's got any ideas what to do with this stuff, please leave comments. Well, some of it I can sell, yeah. I have to. I'm going to have to do that. So I, I need to do a finishing day soon. And there you go. I like him. He's cool. Now, why is it a he? I don't know. Well, I'm just trying to make sure you're not being I don't know. just because it's got yeah. a point. Doesn't make it a he. <laughs> All right. So, and we're, and we're just about out of time. We are sitting at one hour, 30 seconds, and 27 seconds. One hour, 30 minutes, and 27 seconds? Yeah. Well, you can also just cover it with a veneer, right? Pretend this is all covered with the veneer, and you can do all the carving that I showed you. Oh, so you do, you do a negative relief. Yeah carving you know or you can go ahead and do the texturing or a combination of the two that's what's kind of cool about this project is it really is just up to your imagination so like i said what i'll do is i'll finish these ones that um i did with ginger's guided meditation no <laughs> <laughs> and um I might use my water, water mixable or water missable. That's what they're called, oil paints. Um, I do want to show those on stream one night, anyways. It's a perfect, perfect product for me. You know, they wear like iron. They wear like um, you know, oil paints, right? Um, but you can clean them up with soap and water. It is just so cool. But I'll finish up a few more, and I'll even take some photos as, as I finish them up so you guys can see them. Now, and this video is up there for the duration, right? This is so up there, yeah. This is up enough. there. Uh, we're streaming Friday, Facebook. Tomorrow. It's more geared for the EU folks at 2 o'clock, am I right? 
2 o'clock. Um, and the post I put up, actually, I've been adding in a little link to a site where you can go in and uh, put in the time um, that I post, say if I post 2 p.m. Eastern, and it will tell you, uh, it'll convert that to your local time. It'll convert it. And we will probably be doing two Facebook streams. We're trying to find a permanent home for you two. Um, we're, we're, we're not 100%. Most folks really like us on Facebook. Uh, we're making sure that as folks like us on YouTube, we do a stream. So if you have any opinions about that, put them in the comments. I think that I think, yeah, I think that most of our audience is on Facebook. Yeah, our audience. I, I you know, I think I'm Dan Rather. <laughs> Though I do have the goal of getting us to a thousand viewers. We're so we're we we were at like nine twenty one, I think, on you YouTube. Yeah. I have all these little goals. You know, we're going to get here. But we're going to get there. You got to have goals. You got to oh, have yeah. them. You gotta have a Mishi. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed yourself tonight. We're gonna go eat our supper, and uh, you know we'll be back on Facebook tomorrow. You're welcome to come by again. And uh, it is Thursday, isn't it? My brain is all screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what day it is. Mish, um, that's because you really wanted to do Wednesday and and Friday, and I get it. That you wanted to do it, but um, a lot of people, um, you know, Cindy Leet's uh, streams on uh, Wednesday, and um, there were a few other people who were streaming on Wednesday, and so that that's why I said Thursday. So there weren't many people. The, They're uh, just one. All right, folks, have fun, please. If 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 you want a good tutorial. Both of them are good, but the one that's on sale is really awesome. It's, we added, what did you add? About almost 20 minutes worth of additional content to it with your little necklace thing? No, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a 10-minute video, but I okay. did also, there's, there's also a studio guide, you know, the printable studio guide. Um, and it's one of those projects that, you know, it's a simple project, um, but it's, it's striking, you know, and it's a, it's a great it's a great thing for summer. You know, you could wear this with a tank top. You could wear it with a pretty summer dress. Now you guys know why I call myself complete and not a mess. Look at all of this stuff here. Um, you know. And I know resin is big and everybody really likes resin. Um, you know, I go back and forth. But, um, you know, Donna Cato put out a newsletter one time where she did this. Really, it's a thick, glossy finish. You're not painting on a little bit at a time and then using a heat gun. You um, you you put on a thick layer and then you, you pop it in the oven at 330 um, degrees. And I have uh, you know really good luck with it. It doesn't get sticky later. Um, it, it comes out nice and clear and shiny. Um, and because I was a production worker, um, you know it worked out better for me to be able to do a bunch of them and pop them in the oven. Rather than sit there with the heat gun, sitting there with the heat gun, it was too much work, too much work. So, um, and then you have the little bale that comes with it is pretty cool, pretty cool too. It looks like an ear, and you know, Jan Ed Montazzi has a nose bale. I have an ear bale. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right, guys. If we don't see you Friday, have a wonderful weekend, mm -hmm. and be safe. And we're going to go confront the ginger because it's way past yogurt time. And she's probably waiting for us. Yeah, Let's figure out what's for dinner. <laughs>